The fitness industry is built of fads and not science, which I do agree in many cases, but unfortunately I feel like Holly may be falling into the category of fads. One day, I'm gonna have a chair that doesn't squeak. When that day is, that's a great question. Is it gonna be soon? Probably not, but is it gonna be eventually? Most likely, yes. Today is, let me think, let me think, Monday, 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 we're filming another video. This actually stems from the video I did last week, last Thursday, actually, in which I had a look at some influencers and their workouts. And there was one content creator in particular that I was quite disappointed by. And a few people did actually comment saying, you know, this could be a bit spicy, might wanna have a gander and tickle what's going on. So here we are, we've had a gander and you're gonna watch me gander again. We're gonna have a gander at Holly Dolky. So before things do occur on the screen and on the, the platforms, something must occur on the head. True story, when I was actually a wee boy, I actually did have quite blonde hair. Here we are, blonde again. If I could sort this out, I look like Billie Eilish. I got a lot of respect for those with long hair because this, I flick it back, it's still in my face. The price of beauty, is it too much to ask? A few people have actually asked, Harry, what are you going to do with all the headwear and bits and bobs once you're done with them? I'll donate most of them, if not all of them, to a children's hospital around Christmas time. But yes, we must crack on with the video, because obviously it is video time. But obviously, as we normally do, we are going to start on the Instagram. Burn for a round, but interesting. Let's have a gander at what's going on. So we've got the usual, the fire hydrants to the kickbacks. So she's saying, obviously, you do 12 reps on each side, repeat three times. I know, obviously, a lot of people who may be new to the gym, this is more than they are currently doing, which is fantastic. I appreciate that. They end of the day if you're not very active doing some kind of activity is gonna do something for you which is great but eventually that you kind of reach a ceiling of progression limitation we'll say and you need to go a bit further and to progress you need to progressively overload and to do that you can either increase the weight as often as you can or increase the reps so the volume things like that when someone is saying do 12 reps on each side repeat three times if you do that with no change i no progressive overload progress is going to be very limited we'll say a single leg glute bridge i, I kind of back it with with the foot across the leg here, I think that is preference. Some people find it quite hard holding their resting leg out, engages the hip flexors quite a lot. The fact is there's only three movements here. They're very much glute contraction based movements. But if you are doing like a glute dominant home workout, although I would include a glute bridge variation like something like this perhaps, I would probably encourage the individual at home to use some additional weight. And I would likely alter some movements, maybe increase volume so more movements. And I would definitely incorporate things like squats, maybe some walking lunges. They're fantastic, can do those at home and maybe some front foot elevated split squats. Although they are movements that bring in other muscles like the quads and whatnot, they're also movements that I deem to be very effective for targeting the glutes. Most of her workout footage is obviously on YouTube, which is her dominant social media platform in which she has over 1.5 million subscribers. Imagine 1.5 million people. That's a lot of people. I mean, five people is a lot of people in my eyes. I get a bit overwhelmed in social situations sometimes. One of the things I did point out in the last video is how much clickbait is involved. I do understand clickbait is quite a prominent thing force in the YouTube algorithm. There's one thing, titling things in a manner to make it more appealing to a potential audience that doesn't lead to any false promises. Whereas Holly's clickbait is very much the clickbait that maybe focuses and targets false promises, which is the one I have the issue with. Slim legs in 10 days, again, that's promoting something that is not realistically achievable. Tone summer body in under 10 minutes, is that realistic? Can I achieve what one deemed to be a toned summer body in 10 minutes? Ultimately, beauty and body standards are very much subjective. You and I may like very different things on ourselves, but I'm sure we could appreciate that everybody is different and everybody looks amazing in their own way. When you tell somebody they can achieve something like a summer body in 10 minutes or under 10 minutes, and perhaps they don't achieve the results they feel they were promised, and that can have a real negative impact on their self perceptions, like their self esteem, their body image, things along those lines, it can lead them to feel feelings of inferiority. I, Holly looks amazing because she must have done these kind of workouts. Why don't I look like that? That's very much promoting comparison. If you're comparing yourself to someone like Holly, who granted is in phenomenal shape, she looks absolutely incredible. And it's fantastic to see she's getting so many people active, like 1.5 million people subscribed to her. So she's really having quite a lasting impact on a lot of people, getting them to be a bit more active than they may have been before. I really do respect, and I think it's absolutely incredible. But once you start comparing yourself to somebody else, you ultimately get thrown down this rabbit hole of social comparison. And what I mean by that is, if you compare yourself to Holly, who else are you gonna compare yourself to? You may neglect to compare yourself to you. 
which I think is quite important. You were given a genetic makeup and you've had that genetic makeup since birth. That ultimately influences your body's shape. Where you store fat first, where you lose fat last, where you find it easier to gain muscle, where you find it harder to gain muscle. Your shape and kind of structure is determined by your genetics. You can't change your genetics, but what you can do is you can build on them. We all have this end goal of we want to be here, but we also neglect to understand and neglect to appreciate how far we've come from where we started and how great we are where we are right now. Obviously, everybody can improve in all facets of life we can always be better and do better that doesn't mean where you are right now isn't good enough i would say it's more than good enough so let's have a look at the toned summer body in under 10 minutes workout i'm curious again there's no disclaimer stating anything about clickbait it is straight into the workout no real introduction nothing to say you know what this title is a bit clickbaity I, I don't really love things like size crunches i think if you're looking at something that's maybe targeting your obliques a bit more i would again lean towards something like a russian twist something like that something i think you can progress a bit further on so the progressive overload ceiling is a bit higher as you can see her arms are elevated here so she's holding a lot of tension in her shoulders and she's moving her shoulders around so causing them to work to then obviously move the arm. Because of that, they're probably gonna burn and they're probably gonna hurt because they are under a fair amount of tension for about 30 seconds, which is a fair amount of time without any rest or recovery period. And this is what I mean by just because you're hurting it doesn't mean you're working it. When you're doing a movement like this without any real ability to progressively overload and without real purpose, burning the muscle does not mean you're optimizing the growth in that area. One kind of getting from this is essentially it's a full body workout that bumps the heart rate up to start with, with obviously the knee tap toe thingy jigs before then go into more like muscle specific movements like the squat like the side crunch like this and the arm circles to make you feel like you are working multiple areas of the body and those areas probably feel like they're working a fair amount due to the incorporation of movements that most likely encourage prolonged contraction periods such as this one such as the arm circles as i'll always say something is always better than nothing so if you're not very active and you feel like you know what i can manage a 10 minute workout or a nine minute workout then fantastic you know what do it look into the terminology look into concepts like progressive overload and how they can apply to your training to help you reach your goals when looking at home workouts i personally would probably lean towards people like sydney cummings and caroline govan i know i've butchered that and i'm gonna do that on purpose i'm gonna continue doing it because it's now a thing intermission time here it comes stop with the squeaking of the chair it's winding me up before we carry on, I must ask you to do a few things if you, if you wouldn't mind. If you are liking the video and the headwear, I'd really appreciate it if you did like the video. We're bumping the like goal up quite drastically today. We're going to go for 500 likes, big moves. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button down below and the bell next to it to get notified when I upload every week, twice a week on a Monday and Thursday. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below for a comment question of the week and I shall do so. But now, intermission is done. It's a quick one today and I'm getting good at this. We'll crack on with the rest of the video. All right, let's have a game. And uh, her website, there's not really a lot on here, it's just the, the, the quiz and whatnot. Take the quiz, let's find out what occurs here. Uh, age, I'm in my 20s, I want to add some weight. I get quite tired quite a lot, maybe I'm crashing. I like sweets, I do have quite a sweet tooth, maybe that's it. Well, considering everybody mocks me for my food and their distinct lack of flavour, we're gonna go with taste. Yeah, I don't work out every day, but I do work out five times a week, so let's have a gander at that. Let's say four to six months, it's a good time frame. We'll skip the video because it's quite long, I have been through a similar video and it's quite lengthy. Did that really give you all the information you need to help me lose weight and build up some lean muscle? The big misconception is you can build muscle and lose fat at the same time. If you're new to training, then yeah, it is possible. When I say new, I mean like, let's say first year of training, but beyond that, no, it's not really possible without PEDs, unfortunately. Again, this very much promotes that the hourglass shape is the shape you should be striving for. When in reality, I think the, the best shape for your body is the shape you already have, which is you. The fitness industry is built of fads and not science, which I do agree in many cases, but unfortunately, I feel like Holly may be falling into the category of fads. You need to eat the right amount of calories, right amount of fats, protein and carbs, being macronutrients to support your body's health and for hormonal functions. Absolutely, that's fantastic. While getting stronger with your workouts to get you that hourglass shape. I don't like the use of the hourglass shape, but I do appreciate the promotion of getting stronger. I do appreciate the promotion of calories, being like calories in versus calories out, which is obviously going to help you determine weight gain, weight loss, be that calorie surplus and calorie deficit, as well as obviously some discussion regarding macronutrients. It's, it's a bit disappointing to us it's just i feel like this is just very much her trying to sell you something personally I, I don't back what she's selling based on what i've seen here and again i haven't seen everything and again this is merely my opinion let's have a gander women and wellness holly dolky of pink dragon on the five lifestyle tweaks that will help support people's journey towards better well-being people don't care as much as you think they do I, actually i agree with this i do think a lot of people don't actually care as much as you think they might most people are too absorbed in what they're doing to really care or acknowledge what you're doing that very much could be a product of anxiety thinking or a 
assuming more eyes are on you than there may actually be. But that's a good message. I actually do appreciate that. I think that's fantastic. When you feel down, smile. Emotions are very complex. When you are feeling sad, no, you can't just smile, unfortunately. I wish it was that easy. If you are currently or have ever gone through maybe a battle with depression, perhaps, I know is maybe a more extreme example of feeling down. Smiling does not change how you feel. Smiling does not fix the problem. Ultimately, in many cases, if you are feeling a certain way, there is usually a reason as to why. Again, it's not as quick and easy as a smile. If it was, then depression would be cured like that. It's a process, it's a journey, and, and it's a hard one. It's a very tricky one, I know. I think sometimes we do feel down. Sometimes a smile doesn't fix a problem. Sometimes there is something deeper and underlying that is occurring that needs to be addressed. But maybe at the time you don't have the energy or the capacity to address it right now. But just because you can't address it now doesn't mean you won't be able to address it in the future. Sometimes you almost need to accept and embrace the emotions. Like if you are feeling down, I think there is a benefit to your know, feeling sadness and embracing how you feel. So you know what, today is a bad day. Sometimes, you know, I, I can't tell you why, why today is a bad day. I just woke up and I'm feeling low. It feels like there's almost like an element of colour taken from the world. Everything seems a bit grey to me. But that's okay. But I'm going to spend more time doing the things that I enjoy doing and more of the things that hopefully might make my day better. Could get an early night, I'm going to try have a good night's sleep and tomorrow's a new day. Move every day, even if it's just a walk. Yeah, I like that. I like daily activity. I think it's very important. Journaling, we have busy lives, consuming the same amounts of information on a daily basis. I do think journaling can be very beneficial for a lot of people. Maybe declutter your mind and get what's in there on paper and out there. I'm going to be transparent, but I'm going to try and do so in what I believe to be a very fair and politically correct manner. I am quite disappointed with what I've seen from Holly. She has a huge following, which is great. She's obviously positively impacted the lives of many, which is fantastic and I appreciate that. But it's so scary to me to see an influencer with such a large following pushing out a lot of misinformation, a lot of potentially damaging titles through the form of clickbait or excessive clickbait. I re would really appreciate if Holly maybe took a bit more responsibility and accountability and maybe educated her audience a bit further. None of what I'm saying is based on fact, it's merely based on opinion. Before we obviously finish the video, I must we must do what needs to be done, which is comment question of the week. Any good stretches for your footies after a heavy squat day? I assume you mean feet. I think the big thing is if you're getting like foot pain after squatting, perhaps you need to kind of identify why, what's occurring. A good thing I like is either getting a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball and rolling over it. That can be quite good to relieve some tightness, wherever it may be. Another good thing is getting a water bottle, like a small 500ml water bottle, put it in the freezer and then rolling your foot over that. It's like an ice roller essentially. But that's it. That's the video. If you liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you did like the video. Obviously, we have bumped up the like goal quite a lot, as you know. So we're going to shoot for 500 because we're going big things today. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button down below and the bell next to it. If you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, for comment quest of the week, drop it down below and I shall do so at the end of the next video. But regardless of your thoughts and your opinions, regardless of whether you agreed or disagreed, thank you for your time. Thank you for your investment in my content and thank you for tolerating the video.